Hello, my name is Magnus Peterson. This talk is about stochastic present value and Jensen's inequality. The present value of earnings for year T is the amount that would have to be invested today with an annual rate of return D, also called the discount rate, so as to compound into becoming earnings T after T years. We can rewrite it so the present value of earnings T equals a earnings T divided by 1 plus the discount rate raised to the power of T. The present value for n years is the sum of the present value of the individual years. We write it like this. And we could have the number of years n go to an infinity. So what is Jensen's inequality? If we let x be a stochastic variable and let phi be a convex function, and we will demonstrate it on the next slide what that means, then Jensen's inequality states that if we apply the function phi to the variable x and then take the mean, then the result is greater than or equal to first taking the mean of the stochastic variable x and then taking the function phi. And this becomes a strict inequality if the function phi is strictly convex and the variance of x is greater than zero. Present value calculations are exponential of the form x to the power of t, where the stochastic variable x is greater than or equal to zero, and the exponents are 1, 2, 3, and so forth for the future years. And this is a convex function, so Jensen's inequality holds. So if we take x to the power of t and take the mean of that, then it is greater than or equal to the mean of the x to the power of t. Let's give an example of this. If we take x to the power of 4, then we have a curve that looks like this. And because the curve is convex, it means that if we take any two points on the curve, and we draw a straight line between them, then the curve will lie below the straight line. So consider a stochastic variable x, which can take on the values 0.9 or 1.5 with equal probability. We draw them down here, so we have 0.9 here and 1.5 here. And we, if we take that and raise it to the power of 4, then we get something like 0.66. And we take 1.5 and, and raise that to the power of 4, then we get approximately 5. So this point here and this point here. If we take the mean of the x values, then we get 1.2. If we raise that to the power of 4, then we get a value of about 2.07. If we instead take the mean for the two values x raised to the power of 4, then the mean is about 2.86. And we get this value here. And this point lies on the straight line between these two points. And because the function x to the power of 4 is convex, we know that it is greater than the mean of the x values to the power of 4. So Jensen's inequality is satisfied. Now let capital D be a stochastic discount rate. The stochastic present value is denoted PV, and it equals the same sum from before, but we just use a stochastic discount rate instead of the deterministic discount rate. This is an exponential function, because what we have is if we separate it, we get 1 divided by 1 plus d to the power of t, and the t can be moved out, so we get 1 divided by 1 plus d, and that expression to the power of t. So we can use Jensen's inequality, so the mean present value equals the mean of this expression up here, and that is greater than or equal to the same expression, but calculated with the mean discount rate. So this means that if we use a mean or average discount rate, then we may underestimate the present value. Now let capital G be a stochastic growth rate. So now we have the definition of the present value, where we take a starting earning and we have a stochastic growth rate, capital G. This is an exponential function because it is raised to the power of t. And according to Jensen's inequality, we know that the mean present value, which is the mean of this expression here, is greater than or equal to the estimate from using the mean growth rate. In other words, the mean growth rate underestimates the present value. Now let capital G and capital D be stochastic growth and discount rates. So the present value is defined like this. Now we have stochastic growth rate here and a stochastic discount rate here. But once again, we have an exponential function. So this is raised to the power of t. And this means that Jensen's inequality once again holds. So 
the actual mean present value is greater than or equal to the estimated mean present value calculated from the mean growth rate and the mean discount rate. So let's give an example of a stochastic discount rate, which can be either 2%, 10% or 14%. The average discount rate is about 8.7%. We will let the earnings equal one for convenience. I use a computer spreadsheet to calculate the mean present value for the first 10 years. And what I get is the actual mean present value is about 6.78. And when we estimate it using the mean discount rate, then it is only 6.51. So the actual mean, which is this number here, is about 4% greater than the estimated mean. Now let G be a stochastic growth rate that can be either minus 10%, 5%, or 20%. The average growth rate is 5%. Let the discount rate be a constant of 10%. Once again, I use a computer spreadsheet to calculate the mean present value and the actual mean present value is about 9.45 and the estimated mean present value is about 7.81 so the actual mean is about 21 percent greater than the estimate that's a big difference now let's see an example where we have both a stochastic growth rate and a stochastic discount rate let's say the stochastic growth rate can be either minus 10 percent 5 percent or 20 percent and the stochastic discount rate can be either 2%, 10%, or 14%. We will assume that they are independent, so there are a total of nine combinations of growth and discount rate. Once again, I use a computer spreadsheet to calculate the mean present values, and the actual mean present value is about 10.67, and the estimated mean present value, which is calculated from the mean growth rate and the mean discount rate, is about 8.32. So the actual mean is about 28% greater than the estimate. Now let's see an example if we increase the variance of the growth rate so that there's more spread in the growth rate. Now the growth rate can be either minus 15%, 5% or 25%. It has the same mean as before, which was 5%, but the variance is greater now. The discount rate is the same as before, and they are again assumed to be independent. So it is exactly the same calculation as before, only the stochastic growth rate has a greater variance. Now the actual mean is 12.34, and the estimated mean is about 8.32, which is the same as before, because we use the same mean growth rate and mean discount rate. But now the actual mean is about 48% greater than the estimate. So because we have increased the variance of the growth rate, we increase the difference between the actual mean present value and the estimated pre present value. The conclusion is that the mean present value may be underestimated when it is calculated from the mean growth and discount rates. The magnitude of the error depends on the variance of the stochastic growth and discount rates. This talk was based on this paper, which can be found on this website, and the link is also provided below the video.